As 2025 approaches, the U.S. real estate market is marked by contradictions that are leaving many people confused. What are you finding about what it's going to take to juice the housing market and potentially bring down prices, which are so stubbornly high? So by, uh, housing will be the single most important issue over the next several years, and here's why. What's keeping the market relatively strong with rates this high? Why are home prices holding steady, even though it seems buyers and sellers are on pause? Well, let's unpack it. In September, home sales fell to their lowest levels in decades. Existing home sales have plummeted to a 14-year low at 3.8%. 4 million existing home sales. We may have actually less homes sold this year than last year, which was the lowest in 30 years. This year would absolutely be the lowest in 30 years. Now, just 2.5% of U.S. homes changed hands this year, which is the lowest rate in decades. The Federal Reserve last month cut interest rates by a half a percentage point. He decided to lower the target range for the federal funds rate by a half percentage point. In advance of that, mortgage rates dropped down to the low 6% range. But the Fed Reserve rate doesn't necessarily completely correlate with the mortgage rate. The mortgage rate is more closely tied to the 10-year bond yield than it is to the federal Fed's rate. So what happened when the Fed lowered its interest rates? The Fed interest rates dropped, mortgage rates dropped ahead of it and after it, and we were all anticipating that the housing market would kick back in. And you know what? It did. But that was very short-lived. Mortgage rates have popped back up. So one of the most glaring contradictions as we head into 2025 is the persistence of those high mortgage rates, despite efforts by the Federal Reserve to cut the interest rates late in 2024. Many hope these cuts would lead to lower borrowing costs and re-energize the housing market. But home borrowing costs have only marginally dipped. As of right now, October, 30-year fixed rate stands at about 7% as opposed to the expected 6% or below. The lingering effects of inflation, bond market volatility, and a stronger than expected economy has curtailed a significant drop in borrowing costs. This lack of drop has left many prospective buyers still priced out of the market. Many of those in the market to buy a home are frustrated by this mismatch. They watch as monetary policy eases, but mortgage rates, which are often viewed as the gateway to home ownership, remain stubbornly high. This is creating a widening gap between desire and affordability. Home ownership remains the gold standard in the U.S. cultural narrative. The American dream of owning a home persists. Now the good old Fed, they are going to continue to lower rates and hopefully mortgage rates will ease gradually over time. Hopefully they ease. But there's always potential for volatility. Economic news can change things and surprise the market. Wars elections, pandemics can change things very quickly as we have all seen. Lower mortgage rates are expected to boost the housing market, but the lift may be very modest given the continued tightness in existing inventory. There's still a tremendous lack of inventory. And although inventory has increased nationwide, 40% of that inventory is coming from two states, Texas and Florida. We're gonna talk about inventory in a second. Essentially, home buyers are staying on the sidelines, expecting further rate declines. Home sellers are also on the sidelines, waiting for rate declines. If there are move up buyers who want to get a larger house, who have a 3% mortgage rate, they are also on the sidelines, waiting for lower rates and higher prices. Move up buyers are lacking in urgency. They're being more selective. They want the perfect home at the right price. They are not in any rush to sell. So that constrains our inventory. But what has happened to the rest of the supply of the homes? Three main factors Im impact supply. Voluntary sales, construction, and involuntary sales 
like foreclosures. We have talked about voluntary sales. They are low. Nobody really wants to sell. Home builders are also very interest rate sensitive because it costs them more money to borrow. It costs them more money to build. They're gonna wait till interest rates come down as well. And in addition, a lot of the new home builders are subsidizing a lot of the lower end new homes to entice first time home buyers to come in and buy, giving them lower interest rates. So you actually have the companies, the big builders, lowering their interest rates. The home builders, most of which own their own mortgage companies because they're greedy SOBs, they are actually paying to lower the interest rates for certain buyers. It's not across the board, but ultimately by paying down the mortgage rates for certain buyers, home builders are able to sell more homes, but at some point it will affect their bottom line. However, once interest rates are lowered, builders will get that action going and become more active. But we don't have enough new homes and it takes a lot of time to build a new home. Minimum six months can take 18 months, depending on the home. Now the CEO for Taylor Morrison, one of this country's largest home builders, has said that lowering interest rates for first time home buyers has affected their bottom line. But she also said that the move up buyer and the 55 and over buyer have been very, very strong. So they don't need to subsidize them. She says they are typically paying cash and they are not sensitive to interest rates. And therefore the company like Taylor Morrison does not incentivize the higher end lines and their lifestyle properties, the 55 and over crowd. And involuntary sales, foreclosures, remain very low compared to pre-pandemic levels. Even if homeowners are struggling financially, rising home prices mean that they often have equity to sell their home rather than face foreclosure. My name is Eli Magas and I'm a, a real estate advisor here in Charlotte, North Carolina and surrounding areas of Charlotte, specializing in luxury homes, custom homes and new home construction, but most importantly, I am your realtor with heart. Not trying to sell you a house, but here to help you find a home and a lifestyle that you and your family are gonna love. Coming to Charlotte, give me a call. I would love to help you. And if you're not coming to Charlotte, but you're relocating, let's say from LA to Las Vegas, I have clones of me, people who practice just like me, probably better looking than me, who practice the same way. Feel free to reach out. I can put you in touch with some of the best real estate advisors in the country. Call or text. With every increase of 25 basis points in the mortgage rate, the amount that someone must pay on a monthly mortgage goes up by 3%. So a 50 basis point move in the mortgage rate means that your monthly mortgage payment goes up by 6% which is very, very substantial on a monthly basis. If mortgage rates could just get to 6% and stay there, we can grow sales from these depressed levels. My opinion, mortgage rates need to get down to 6% and stay there and eventually and hopefully get down into the high 5% range for the housing market to unfreeze for everybody, for buyers who are on the fence and for sellers who are on the fence as well. Of course, no one can predict the future with certainty, but we can definitely look at international examples for hints. In the UK, where interest rates were cut slightly earlier than ours, housing activity and prices in September rose at the fastest rate since the end of the pandemic. This underscores why mortgage rates matter so much. Now there is a caveat to all of this, that if the mortgage rates fall, you may have a lot of people coming out of the woodwork. I'm sure they will. And because of limited inventory, you might be dealing with increasing housing prices. In any event, mortgage rates need to come down in order to unfreeze this market. My biggest fear is that mortgage rates come down and prices continue to rise. 
So while all those dynamics are playing out with mortgage rates and inventory, another crazy contradiction to this housing market is that while homes are not selling like hotcakes, not selling like they were, the housing market is still very, very strong in many areas of the country. Remember, all real estate is local. Every market is completely different. Housing demand is high in some areas, while other areas struggle to sell. Real estate markets across the United States reflect a growing divide. While many markets are chronically plagued by a housing shortage and low inventory, others are struggling with a rising oversupply and stalled sales. In high demand markets such as California, New Jersey, Washington DC, affordable homes are generally very hard to find and competition remains fierce. Inventory is low, keeping prices elevated. The median home price in California in September was up 6.5% month over month at $886,000. And in contrast to that, other regions are facing a marked slowdown. In Florida, rising insurance premiums tied to natural disasters like the last two hurricanes that we had can make home ownership more of a liability than an asset. Insurance rates in Florida have surged 45% between 2017 and 2022, according to a recent report from the Florida Policy Project. It's probably up even more. According to a recent Wall Street Journal analysis, an increasing number of homeowners in Florida are struggling to sell due to skyrocketing insurance costs, as well as increased HOA costs because buildings have to be fixed. Events like the hurricanes that recently hit the state and ravaged it have only exacerbated the situation. Many Floridians are looking to sell and to leave. The paradox is striking. While demand is high in some states, homeowners in other states are grappling with insurance burdens and stagnant buyer interest, exacerbating regional imbalances in the U.S. housing market. According to our friends at Redfin, pending sales and home tours still remain fairly strong even as mortgage rates rise to their highest levels since the midsummer. This contradicts everything that we think about. This is a huge contradiction. Pending U.S. home sales rose year over year during the four weeks ending October 20th, which is the biggest increase in three years. That's with a high interest rate and high prices. And on a local level, remember all real estate is local, pending sales are up in 35 of the 50 most populous U.S. metros which is the most in three years. Demand is also holding up at earlier stages of the home buying process, which is the touring process. Redfin's economists expected a bigger drop off in home buying demand given how much mortgage rates have increased in the last few weeks, but that has not happened in many cities. Cash buyers may be propping up home sales. Now, nobody knows how this is gonna play out, Nobody has a crystal ball, but with the Federal Reserve lowering their interest rates, the hope is that mortgage rates will come down and we will see how this all plays out in 2025 with a new president or a formerly old president, new president. Anybody who tells you that they know exactly what's going to happen is somebody who you shouldn't really be listening to. Buying a home is a deeply personal experience and everybody has a different reason for purchasing a home. Many people have been talking about the housing market crash for five years. And if you had listened to that advice, you would have been kicking yourself in the behind right now. Now, speaking from experience, it's very hard to time the market, whether it's the housing market or the stock market. If you're considering buying a home, Focus on whether or not you can afford the home right now. Remember, the home is an investment vehicle, but it's also a place for living and making memories. Thank you so much for watching. And until we see each other again next time.